Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm going to run you through the uh, Tura key step today. What I'm going to demo today is chord mode, the ARP, and the sequencer. So let's start with uh, chord mode. And if you want to make a chord, you know, right now if I tap the keyboard, you're just going to, it's just going to be like I'm playing a piano. Fair enough. So if I want to do a, a record a chord, I can push three keys like that, right? I can either play it just like a piano. Or I can get the key step to do that for me. How I do that is I hold down shift, I hold down the hold key there, put the three notes of the chord in, let go, and now when I push a key, it's going to play that chord. Cool. Now if I want to turn that off and I just want the regular keyboard, I hold down shift, I hold down hold, it's off, and I get my regular keyboard back. Now chord mode can do up to I think 16 notes, so you can experiment with that. It's You're never going to hold down 16 keys, maybe you can, I don't know. Uh, I have trouble holding down more than three myself, so best of luck to you. But that's a way that you can make some cool chords by uh, just holding down shift and hold push in the keys you want to be part of that chord, let go and bang and then you can play the chords. And then also when you turn it off, if you want the your chord back, you can hold down shift and hold to turn it back on and what the last one you put in will be remembered. And what's cool about chord mode and why I wanted to show you first is when you use the ARP and when you use the sequencer, you can use chords as part of the sequence or as part of what you're doing in the ARP. Now ARP, this switch here switches between ARP and sequencer. So right now I got the sequencer on, down into ARP. Now when ARP is on, I can push this play button here and that's gonna activate it. And you can see it's playing the chord. Now if I don't want it to play the chord and I just want it to play the regular key, I hold down shift and hold. Chord mode is off. Awesome. So let's say you know that I don't. I want that. I don't want that. Dun 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 dun. I mean, you know, I want something a little bit more upbeat. How do I get it faster? All right, I'll show you how to do that. The easiest one is this tap on here. So you can tap this to the the beat you want. So if I tap it really fast, see how it speeds up. If I want it really slow. really slow so three taps how fast those three taps are away from each other is gonna basically do the tempo now if you that that's a quick way to do it on the fly instead of have to tweak with these knobs I'm gonna show you the knobs now so if you don't really want to guesstimate with the button you can guesstimate with the rate dial here rate is based upon the time division dial here so I put the rate back in the middle and this is going to control the tempo right here so every note every 132 every 32 one every 26 one every 16th and one every eighth I'm not sure the 32th or whatever the crap is. yeah so there you go so you can do the time division here and then within that time division you can make it really slow or blindly fast. There you go. Let's put something a little bit more sane on. Okay. So you can control the tempo with this touch button here. Within, once you set it between the time division or there, you can control it with the right here. And then you can also radically change it with the time division down here. Now let's say you're doing a live gig and you want to do some cool effects. You're probably not going to want to do something like this. All right, let's, let's hit them with a, speed it up. <laughs> no, it sounds awful, right? So what you can do with this time division is, let me get something a little less offensive. You can hold down shift, tweak this time division, let go of shift, and it will change that. So you don't have to, you know, and have it all choppy. You can do clean 
changes with this while you're playing the the sequence and have it instead of having it like this even if, even if you do it fast it doesn't sound good as there you go okay so that's how you control the tempo you have these dials here uh, if you want to control um, not have to hold down the key I'm going to show you how to do that now so this is cool yeah but let's say you don't want to have to hold down the key push down the key push hold there you go push hold if you want it to stop now let's say you want to build up your own arp Hold down a key, keep holding down that key, and add. Just add what you want on top of it. And it's going to keep on appending whenever you push last on to the end. Unless I push something lower. And if I let go, it's going to play that. Up here, you can control the order of the ARP. And so there's a bunch of different settings. And they're all pretty standard. The one that's kind of nice is order, which is good. So if I do random, it's going to do random. If I do up to, it's going to push every note that I push. Dun, 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 dun. But you can see it's starting at the lowest note, going up high. Now you can reverse that to go down. But what's nice is the order one is kind of cool because it will do it the actually how you pipe it in with the keyboard. throws that dun in the middle of it remember I would hit that dun at the end but before it was putting it at the beginning and if if I push a key any key right now that the herb is on it's gonna reset the thing so unless you're holding out the original note of the ARP anything you push so if I hear it hit this go on fine but as soon as I push another note that Dun, 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 it's going to be lost. Okay, let's say you're playing around with your ARP. And you want to shift up an octave. I go octave up, it's like, oh, I'll let go and... Oh, wait. Okay, well, I'll, you know, I'll go back down. I'll do hold. Go up an octave and I'll push it again. Oh yeah, right. I can't let go of the key. So how do I go up or down an octave with the ARP and get it on the same note? I'll show you how to do that now. So hold down the key, hold shift, and hold up. And if you want to go up another octave, hold shift and go up. And if you want to go up another octave after that, hold shift and go up. No oh, wait. That was too high. I'm going to hold shift and go down. And you can go down to do, 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 and all the way back to the beginning of just the one note. And it's like, ah, I want to try to go down. You can do the same for going down octaves. So there you go. Last thing I'm going to show you with the ARP, and this will work for the sequencer too, is the gate settings here and the swing settings here. So let's set another ARP together here. And you can see those octave changes have held through even through even though I let go of hold it's going to keep that for your your octaves or for your ARP. So if you want to get rid of that you have to then hold down shift and bring this back up. And then there we go. Those are now gone. So you don't have to actually, which is a bit of a mind bend, <laughs> to say it lightly, when it comes to the ARP. Because you would think naturally, it's like, oh, if I'm not holding down a hold, and I let go of my, my um, ARP, it's going to reset it. Yes. But for these octave shifts, so you can see, I've let go of everything. Hold is not on. I get that. Bum, 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 bum. I'm like, 
like, well, I just want the bump, 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 bump. Well, it's remembered that when I've held down, and you can see when I've held down shift, it's flashing octave. And if I push it a lot, it's like, hey, hey, num nuts, I'm remembering that you want the ARP to go up three octaves. And so I'm like, actually, no, I want it to just be regular again. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift and push octave down three times. And now when I push the ARP key again, there you go. It's only that one note. All right. Now that I showed you how the ARP uh, remembers the octave, the octave changes you've made to it, even if you let go of a key, unlike everything else on the ARP, I am now going to show you how the gate and the swing can impact your ARP. So if I hold down a B key here and build a new one. Now what the gate's going to do is basically control how long it's, uh, you know, if I was doing boom, 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 or bump, 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 kind of, you'll hear it in a second here. So I hold down shift and I set gate to 10%. It's like if I'm quickly hitting it. Now I can set it to 90% here. And between 25 to 50%, if I want right in the middle, there you go. It's back to kind of a medium. Now the swing is just kind of how much it's, so what's right now, it's, it's off, right? So if I hit shift and off, no change. Swing's just going to kind of change up the tempo a little bit. It's hard to explain. Um, Google it if you want a better description than that shitty one. Let's go set it to 61%. See how it kind of just messes it up? Now let's set it to 75%. And the lowest value here at 53%. So you can see in blue it shows you above. You just push basically the key that's right underneath what's in blue. And then it's like, you know what, I like it better off. Just turn it off. And this gate control and this swing control also works with sequence mode which we're going to cover right now. All right, let's go over sequence mode now. Sequence mode, so switch it up here, ARP to sequence, and let's play. Uh, yeah, I got a keyboard, but nothing's happening. Well, let's hit play. Uh, that's a lovely sequence. You can store up to eight of those lovely sequences in here. So if I push play again, again, as I shuffle through one to eight here, it's going to play the eight different sequences that are saved on this key step. So you can save eight sequences up to 64 notes on the key step that you can send out to a synth and tell it to play those 64 uh, notes. So let's say, hey, I want to make a new sequence, but I want to get rid of this crap. I hold down shift, I hit stop, or clear last, I keep hammering that, and what that's doing is it's deleting note by note by note, nine by note, one of those 64 notes till there's no notes left. And it's like, okay, awesome, I'm going to start recording my sequence now. Well, why is it not recording? Well, record is not on, so if I hit record, you're going to see it's going to flash. What that means is basically it is just going to replace when it flashes saying, hey, I'm playing a note, I'm playing a note, I'm playing a note. So let's turn down the tempo way down. See how that flash stops? So every time that flashes, that means playing a note, I'm playing a note, but it's got no notes to play. So it's like note one is a rest. So I'm going to say, hey, replace note one with this. Say I want to go dun dun. So, wow, well, it's just recording over what is in there because it's just flashing. So if you ever see flashing, it's not going to add on to your sequence. Whatever notes playing when this flashes, it's going to change. And then let's say, hey, I want to rest. It's like, well, I've just replaced your dun with with nothing. All right. Well, we want to actually make a sequence. So how do we do that? Hit stop. So if you're pushing play and hit record, it's going to let you modify what you have. If you want to just create a new one, make sure nothing is playing, push record, and now you can actually build something like... Now, you heard how I went... Boom, doo-doo. 
Sequencer is dumb. It's just going to go do 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 do. It's not going to remember how long I hold, hold notes. So let's show that. So you can see. And then if I want to speed that up, I can with the rate or the time date, just like I showed you in the uh, arp earlier. Chords on and slow it down. So I'm gonna get rid of something in the middle here. You know how I do that? When it's playing, I hit that rest button. It's gonna erase that note or rest. And that's how you can also space out how your your sequence sounds too. Right here. So that's how you can make it a little more rhythmic to whatever you want to craft it with. You can add in notes. Okay. So if this is on like this, what else you can do is hold down shift and append. What this does now is it's not going to replace what's playing. It's going to add it on to the end of the sequence. So I'll show you by putting a, when it hits the beginning of the sequence, I'm going to play a really high note. So that would have, if this append wasn't on, it would have made that initial note really high. It's going to make it on to the end. And then it starts. So if it's ever fully on like that, it's, hey, I'm going to add it on to the end of your sequence. Now, if it's not glowing like that, and flashing like this, it's going to replace whatever's playing at that point in time. That's key. Understanding that basic order of how the sequencer works will really kind of give you a clue because it's really confusing at first. It's not like other sequencers for vocals or whatever that are pretty much, hey, you play something and it goes down. It's got its own unique habits. So remember the keys of the sequencer are remember that these one to eight control nothing besides the save slot of your sequence. So I'm in sequence five, if I turn it to six, I'm going to get something completely different. Now if I turn it back to our old sequence 5. And remember what I told you before, the gate will impact the sequence the same as the arp. So let's turn the gate long. Let's turn the gate short. Same as the swing as before too, so we got a lot of swing on it. All right, one final thing on sequencing is I want to cover it at the beginning when I started showing you the sequence is the transport, transpose, pardon me, and keyboard play. So I've uh, done a quick sequence here. So what happens if I push it? I hit shift keyboard play. Now if I hit shift transpose, what happens if I push a key? Crank the octave and push a key. Shifts how the whole sequence sounds. But if I actually want to perform over top of the sequence, well, the keys aren't doing anything. shift and keyboard play now I got my keyboard back and you can noodle over top of it so that's one thing to remember if you're playing a sequence and you're trying to play over top of it and the sequence is shifting all around on there you're probably in transpose mode don't panic 
hold down shift, keyboard play, and your sequence is going to stop morphing on you, and you'll be able to play keyboard over top of whatever your sequencer on the key step is doing. Um, that was one thing that got me a lot. Um, now that we covered the chord mode, the art mode, and the sequencer, uh, the final thing I wanted to show you is how to switch between MIDI channels. Uh, so right now I've got this plugged in via MIDI into another synth. Let's say, um, no I don't have one, but let's say you had a MIDI splitter. You could plug in the MIDI out from here into a MIDI splitter, send it to a number of synths or whatever, and then each synth could be assigned its own MIDI channel, and you can switch between MIDI channels on the fly here. So what I've done now is I've plugged uh, the key step into a circuit, which has two different synths. One is on channel one, and one is on channel two. And I'm going to play that to you on the circuit right now. So this is synth one. Once. There you go, synth one, and let's play synth uh, number two. So two different sounding synths. So let's see what happens when I play on the keyboard right now. So that's synth number one. Let's say I want to switch to synth number two. So I hold down shift and push two. So there you go. So let's say I want to I make a nice sequence and let's play it. It sounds so great on synth number two. So it's like, okay, well, hey, that's cool. I want that to keep playing on synth number two. Let's switch to synth number one and play something cool on that. Yeah, what the hell happened? What happened to my pattern on number two? Remember, the sequence is on the key step, not the device it's playing. If you want to, say, have this play on number two. I need to save this onto the circuit and make sure the circuit has that and is playing it and then switch to number one and then do whatever I want on there while that number two plays. So remember, even though you can switch between systems and you can make sequences or ARPs, as soon as you take the controller off of synth one and move it to synth two or vice versa, whatever's happening on the key step is going to hit synth one or synth two, whatever you got to assign to. Unless you specifically on the device say, hey, numbnuts, remember that, play this for me on my circuit, not my key step. As soon as I switch, it's going to kill that. So, well, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about anything I covered or anything I didn't cover, uh, please shoot them below. I'll try to get to them as I can. Anyways, um, have a great evening, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.